Hi lads, ladies, um, back to the grind. Um, this is the sheath for that uh, customer who um, I make a lot of his martial arts sheaths for his martial arts equipment. So I thought I'd bring you along uh, for this. And um, this one's a, these are funny these because he has on this particular one that I do for him. The other one he I, I die, but this one he has no die. Um, just just finishes. I'll just give it um, a resiline uh, finish on these, so they're just nice and neat, and um, you know you have to keep your hands really clean. And um, little tip: when you're cutting out two pieces, cut out your front piece, then turn that over onto your leather, and then cut round that for your back piece. That way, they'll they'll marry uh, properly rather than cutting the two pieces out the same um, like that one and that one um, you'll find there'll be a bit of a difference um, if you use the front piece turn it over um, you'll then see that you'll, you'll get it it'll just be much better right Okay, just out a tad that. Just gonna use my scratch all here, just to make sure. Okay, that's better. I can see what I'm doing now. Okay. Okay guys, a little bit more work on these. Now, I've done all the holes, marked, um, I always like to pull it left for the front. Um, okay, also I've had um, a big, I had to order, uh, you know, it was that time again where I had to order a lot of leather in and maybe I was thinking I could do a video of showing the kind of quality you want to be looking for when you get your hides. Also, if you're getting your hides and it's not like that, then you maybe you can go back to your supplier and say, well, hold on, you know, I'm paying such and such and uh, this ain't the best or this ain't right. Because some people might not know what they're looking for and might just think that's just the way it is. Um, if that makes sense. And uh, there's certain properties in leather you want to be looking for. Um, when it's good quality, um, so maybe I could do that too. Um, yeah, I've got a, a big commission to do as well with um, a leather hold all. Um, I've had a guy from uh, who works away a lot on chips, and uh, you know he's always uh, hopping all over the world and stuff like that. And uh, he's commissioned me to make him a, a real bespoke uh, leather hold all. Which is I'm really looking forward to doing. I love them kind of projects. You know, I'm gonna have to. It's gonna have to be lined. I've just had <clears throat> his lining material land that he chose, which is like a denim that he wants for the inside. The leather, the broad leather I've got him for this bag is just it's 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 beautiful, absolutely outstanding. <clears throat> there aren't many times I make. I just know when I've made this, I want to keep this one. Um, this is going to be an amazing commission. Um, if there was enough left on the hide, which I don't think there will be, I, I'd love to make myself one. Um, anyway, um, right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to um, just scribe out that inside here. Now, when we come to do this, you obviously you don't want to go right to this edge because if you come off, off there, when you come to put them two pieces together, 
you're going to have that gap in there, an unsightly gap, and uh, if you're anything like me, it'll drive your pottery because it won't marry up properly. So we're going to just shy of that there because this is where your glue line. Um, Just draw a quick line in to show you what I mean. Okay, that's where your your glue line will be, if you know what I mean. So you only want to scythe to those lines. It'll also then when you come when it comes to put that in, you know you'll have a nice little rounded edge in there, and you won't be fighting with the square edge to put it in. It'll you know aid with the uh, pruning away of the tool. So I'm using a number three. Um, Score for this. Sometimes I'll use a number two. It just depends on. Um... Also, if you've drawn and you've got a little bit of pen up close to here or whatever, don't worry about it because when you come to whip this edge off, you know, that'll disappear. Okay, so what we have now, you should be able to see this. Already naturally, you've got that gap. See it? Because you've taken those two pieces away. You see, it's already nice and round, and it will already accept it very easily. Just be, just because of that. Now, if you hadn't done that and you got them two flat square edges there, it, you know, you, it, it wouldn't be the best. So, yeah. Okay, right, so I'll do that with all of these now, and then um, we'll glue these together, and then we'll look at sewing it up, putting the finishes on. Okay, I'll glue this, uh, glue this now, I still haven't had a chance to sort my hand glue out yet, but uh, when I do do it, I'll definitely video that, the way I thin it down and uh, show you uh, how I go about doing that as explained a lot of times you know there's a reason why I do it if you look back on the other videos about the you know the, the bonding being better okay so we'll start with the back um, just start applying a little bit of this contact adhesive you can draw like, like I did with the other ones you can draw a line it just gives you a bit of a reference to um, where to take the contact adhesive up to. Um, I'll use the stitch holes as a as a reference for that. Together, just to see how it's going to hold up. There's a product called Elmer's. Elba's rubber cement and what this will allow you to do is it will allow you to glue something up it won't like contact adhesive, adhesive it up but what it will allow you to do is put the two pieces together check the fit or if you need to put something together sew it and then pull it apart again for some reason, reason what that uh, Elma's uh, adhesive will, will allow is it'll allow you to do that put the piece together make sure everything's as one then it will also allow you to pull it apart again after just rub the the elmers off and then put your real contact adhesive on sometimes you know if you need to test something out or you know really really comes in handy that does it's, it's, a, it's a good tip that to uh, um, you know, if you're doing something and you just want to see how it's going to look before you sew it up or make sure everything's going to be alright or even test the retention um, to see whether it's going to be too tight or, you know, you could use it for that and then just pull it apart and get rid of it. Okay, guys. Right. Okay, they've had the two coats. Smooth them up. Or handheld. Um, we do now is uh, it's not so hot today, so it's taking a little bit more time. 
Um, what I could also do here as well is just, excuse me, just before that sets is add just a tiny bit of water here, very minimal, because I don't want a, a puddle mark on the back, which it will do, because it'll just be natural with no dye on it. Um, And when it dries you'll end up with a like a puddle mark on there and uh, I can just give those edges just a little burnish just very slightly I mean I will be painting the, the edges on these but it'll just help with that curve for when we uh, come you know for the putting the, the tool away. Right, okay, front, back, check the inside, whoops. What you can also do as well to make sure your holes are going to line up, I've got some very very small pins. I use these quite a lot with big projects. And um, just to make sure, I'll show you what I mean, just gently put these two together So if you've got a big long project and you need to sew it up and you want to make sure all those holes are going to marry. It's not so um, with, with this, uh, you know, and I've, you know, I've cut this out quite accurately, you know, so everything's pretty much bang on. But, you know, sometimes projects are not always going to be that neat and tidy or, you know, there's reasons why. Just gently push it together. I've not really set that yet. What you can do then is get your little pins and just make sure you know you can skip every other one or you see what I mean and then you can let that dry with those in see let that dry with those in um, I'll set this now in a sec let that dry with those in you know if it's a bit out or something you can push these in force it round a little bit and then when you come to sew it up after you know you'll know you'll be able to get to your holes there's a, uh, another tip for you, um, if you, you know, you're struggling when you put stuff together, if you've had to do the all separately, rather than go through it all as one. Okay, we'll set this now, because I know they're going to line up, because I've just tested it. I've moved that old cutting mat off now, that was, you know, so that when I come to set this, this is nice and smooth and clean, otherwise if I'd have done it on there, all them marks off there, when you come to set this, would be on this. Okay, there we go, all the edges are, you know, near enough perfect now, um, you know, it's all set, a couple more to make sure, what we do now is take our edger, as always if possible try and do it in one, Okay. Cleaned up all them edges. I shall do all the others now. Um, and uh, oh, makers marks. I'll do it with the others. I'll get away with this one doing it now because it's like that. But you know, try not to forget that. I'll do these ones before I put them together now. But uh, it's thinking about <laughs> you lot that is. But luckily. You know, because it's, it's just a two-piece like that, I'll be able to do it. But, you know, if it was all stuff on the back and that, well, you know, it's a bit like then. What you can do, if you ever get stuck like that, is you can heat your um, stamp up, the heat gun, um, and gently press it, and that'll put your mark in for you as well. Okay, guys? Here you go, guys. Is the mark put on. So we make as mark put on on the back. There's the other two. The leather's still a bit damp, so there we go.
Okay, this is my stippling done. These are still drying a bit, but okay. Just to take those sharp points off the edges, just gives it just that little bit better of a look. Um, just clean them up. Okay, guys. Right, guys. It's just about time for stitching. Um, now, I made this all specifically for this type of tasks when. Um, you know, I've got all different types of awls, but uh, all different shapes and sizes, but this is a video on its own. You know, I'll polish these up myself anyway. Um, the reason why this one's so small, if I was to use that one, as you can see, it's for a different size awl, or even that one. As I come to push this through, when we come to stitch, it's going to widen that hole up too much. Boy, because I've, I've sunk that in so much, when we come to put that through to keep that nice angle, it'll only literally, all it's doing is just widening the hole for me to help with the stitching. You know, it's it's not changing the shape of the hole, because it, it, it's, it's a diamond shape. It's also, it, it, it's just making sure that the hole is one, but basically it's just giving me that channel to help me along with my needles but it's not interfering if I was to push this through and try and do that you know I'd only be able to use the tip but you you wouldn't you'll push too much and your hole will be that thickness then and you'll have big holes small holes it would just look terrible so when you're using awls use the right awl for the right job the right size guys um, right um, it's time to sort the thread out for these and uh, we'll start stitching it. Um, just a little thing with white thread. As you know, the, my, my uh, thread of choice always has been this tiger thread. Um, I always keep it in the white thread. The other colours, it doesn't matter. But this white I like to keep as pristine and as clean as I possibly can really. So I always keep it in um, this little sealy bag. And... Uh, like that and then keep it closed up so if you're using a lot of white thread for your goods make sure you really wash your hands because it real marks um, and you're defeating the object then of the white of the white stitching really um, you know and, and keep it clean out of the way in a drawer in a bag um, you know so the dust don't get on it and stuff like that and starts you know sitting on the wax and it'll you know you no good okay so uh, I'll work out the length of this thread and uh, I'll get back with you Alright well guys, I'm going to try and bring you through with how I go about doing this stitch I was on about. Take your awl, um, find the angle of your hole that you've pricked with your pricking iron. Gently push the awl through, take the awl out, switch the needle over, through. Back through, over, cast, pull. And this will give you your real nice slanted stitch. This looks even better when you haven't got a stitch groove. Um, even though I, you know, I did them, it, it, it's a very light groove, it'll still pull. The stitch won't be as slanted as it would if you didn't do it without it. For some reason, I think the camera's gone out of focus, so... Oh, I have bugger. Okay. Here we go again. Needle. All in hand. 
right take your all through your hole swap it round to your needle through back through the same hole at the top cast over and pull why is it not focusing right let's try that right ball through the hole through back through on top over all back through back through on top over all whoops let's do the hole over I hope you can see what I'm doing here Hi guys, well, they're done. I forgot to film, just all I've done basically is put the resoline on. Um, basically all I've done is um, I'll give them a coat of water, let that dry and um, put the resoline on. Nothing on the edges, just pure burnish and a bit of resoline. Something, um, see the, 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 these type of stuff look simple but when it's so natural like this and you can see everything, it, you know, there's no room for error at all because you'll see every floor, you know, you, you know, you, there's no dye or to darken down bits or, you know, stuff like this, they're very simple but, but if you don't get them right, they, they'll show a multitude of sins if you, you know, especially with your stitching, um, as you can see. Um, we've got that nice angled stitch now. Um, you know, that slant, slant, you know, but just not as pronounced as if it was with... There we go. There's your nice angled uh, saddle stitch. Okay, retention. Nice. There we go, there's that sh Very nice. They all turned out great to be honest. Quite pleased with them. Um, same with the stitch again. Very happy. Very happy indeed. 